in Luke chapter 9, 23 through 25, Jesus tells anyone who wants to follow after him, here's the requirements for doing so. He says, number one, you have to deny your selfish ambition. Number two, take up your cross daily. Number three, follow him wherever he goes. And then he elaborates on that. And it's really very simple, but it's also very costly. Because what Jesus is saying is, you cannot self-determine what it looks like to follow me if I'm going to be your Lord and your Savior. Because the very fact that he's our Savior, yes, we want to be saved from sin, and we want to receive the benefits of being in relationship with him, including not limited to heaven or life abundantly here on this planet, etc. But then there's also the Lordship. Jesus is Lord of all things, and therefore, that's where I get to, I'm invited to, lay down selfish ambition and take up the cross daily and follow. And it's that very thing that Paul is addressing in this last week's message that we went into at the end of chapter 2 of Colossians and beginning of chapter 3. And at some point, remember one of the main things that the Colossians were dealing with, matter of fact, the main thing that they were dealing with is syncretism, or the combination of potentially... Uh, philosophies that are at odds with each other, or it's an amalgamation, a combination. It's like, I really like this, and I like this, and therefore this, and I just kind of mash it up and make it my own thing. And even though it's been, you know, more than 2,000 years about since this was written, we're still looking at it and think this is such an American and Western way of engaging that we could combine and kind of have our own personal brand of truth, our own personal brand of religion, even though when you start talking about it, if something is really true, it's true all the time. But that very idea has become so uh, foreign in the world that we live in, people start announce it, well, here's my truth. And it doesn't matter if it's somebody else's truth because you can have yours, I'll have mine. And that's syncretism. We combine beliefs. We combine thought processes. We combine identities. And we say, this is what we are. And Jesus says, no, if you want to come to me, here's what it looks like. And it's funny because as Paul's writing to the Colossians, he's not coming with a heavy hand to try and hammer people. He's coming to them and saying, I just want to remind you of the Christianity that you received, of the Christ and him crucified that was preached. And that is that you would deny yourself as ambition, take up your cross daily, and follow him. You cannot bring anything with you as part of your identity into that relationship. That means our national origin. It means our race or ethnicity. It means our political views. It means our sexual identity and practices. Everything is subject to Jesus Christ. And in some ways, we could look at it and think, well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. How can I separate this stuff from who I am and what Jesus wants me to be? And I don't want to become something different than I am. And that's a very valid declaration because Jesus doesn't want you to become something less than you are either. He wants you to become the very best version of yourself, the one that G that he created you to be and to do. And so in this, this is where the role of repentance comes in. Because oftentimes we'll be functioning, thinking everything's wonderful and great, and we'll be confronted with an idea or a thought or a practice, and maybe it's related to our identity, the things I mentioned a minute ago, maybe it's related to something else, and we're confronted with, here's what Jesus is inviting me to do in following him, here's where I am right now, and I can't bring where I am right now into the area of following after him. I have to choose either to continue in this or to create my own version of Jesus and kind of march with that. And we get the opportunity to decide, will I repent or change my heart, change my mind, and change my actions, or will I continue and be the Lord of my own life and use Jesus where, uh, kind of as a blessing machine, where he, he will fit me. And Paul is not dropping the hammer on the Colossians, but he continues to invite them to put down, put away, to starve the things that are of the normal fleshly, earthly nature, and to put on or clothe ourselves with the things that are of Christ. And as we do that, we continue to line ourselves up with the, the idea that is behind those verses in Luke. To deny our selfish ambition is to say, not my will, but yours be done. To take up our cross daily is to say, I've been crucified with Christ, and I don't live according to the life I want to live anymore. I live according to your, your direction and your words and your instructions, and I'm going to follow you every day. That's what it takes to be a person who is a Christ follower, a Christian, is a person who is walking after Christ in the manner that Christ prescribes according to what Christ says. And we can't self-identify. It's up to him to identify. So just some things to think about, but also 
if you find yourself in a spot where you're at, at, a, at a crossroads, you're finding yourself at a spot where you're having to wrestle through, what does it look like for me to walk in with Jesus as my Lord and Savior when I'm also being confronted with this thing that was part of my identity that maybe Jesus is saying, no, that's not who I say you are. You're something different than that. You're this, and I'm moving you in this way. We have the opportunity to submit ourselves to God's processes and to allow his identity for our life to emerge. And it's not a very clean process. It's not a quick and easy, just three steps. It's a practical process of spending time with the community of church, spending time with Jesus, spending time reading scriptures, and spending time, you get this idea, spending time with them. The more time we spend with them, the more we're able to hear, respond, and do his will for our lives. So here's what Jesus says. Take up your cross daily after you've laid aside your selfish ambition and follow after me. Everything of who we are pre-Christ is laid at the cross, and he'll show us what we're supposed to pick up, if anything. But it's the best life that there is to live. Have a great rest of your week.